it's nighttime in the big city. Everything must go. And we pass the savings on to you. It's Steam Time Radio Hour with your host from coast to coast, Bob Dylan. Theme Time Radio Hour, and it's been getting hard to move around the studio. We've got merchandise stacked up to the ceiling. Records I've brought in, records that were sent to us, records that were already here in the Abernathy building, records that Tex keeps trying to get me to play. We're lousy with records. I wish there was an easier way to store them. The only thing to do is to hold a bit of a clearance sale. You know, play the songs that we meant to play in other shows, and that way we can cross them off our list, and I can take them all back to the house. The only problem is, when we do a show like this, like Spring Housekeeping, we're able to give you tips about springtime. I mean, I suppose I can give you some shopping tips. You know what we'll do? Why don't I play a bunch of songs by people named Clarence? It's a little bit of a cheat. I mean, it's missing an E, but it's close enough to Clarence. After all, there are not that many Clarence sales songs. We'll start our cavalcade of, cavalcade of, cavalcade, cavalcade of Clarence's. You try saying it with Clarence Ashley. We've told you about Clarence, how he took his name from his maternal grandfather, how he worked at a sawmill, how he started recording in 1929. You know all of that. Maybe you don't know this song. He re-recorded this in 1962. He had Doc Watson on guitar then. I love Doc, but I'm going back to 1929. Here's Clarence Ashley, and he's looking for little C. Take a little round, I made a little shiny and I blowed her down. I run right home and I went to bed. A 44 smoke list under my head. I woke next morning at half a past nine. The bunkers in the hacks all swarmed in line. The gents and the gamblers standing around. I'm gonna take stand at your burying ground. I grabbed my hat and away I run I made a good run just a little too slow They overtook me in Jericho I stand on the corner ringing a bell Up step chef from Thomas Bell Says young man ain't your name Brown Don't you remember the night you broke Sandy down I murdered little Sandy in the first degree, in the first degree, in the second degree. If you got any papers, will you read them to me? Took me downtown to wrestling back, put me on the train and sent me back. Well, I had no one for to go my bailey, crammed me back in the county jail. The jury took their stand. Judge held the papers in his right hand. Forty-one days, forty-one nights, forty-one years to wear the bowling Clarence sale. When you're going out shopping, comparison shop. At some stores, sale merchandise will cost more than some of the same merchandise sold at the regular price at another store. The name Clarence is from the Latin title Clarensis, which belonged to members of the British royal family. The title also immediately derives from the name of the Clare River in Ireland. 
The Duke of Clarence is a title that has been traditionally awarded to junior members of the English and British royal families. The title was first granted to Lion of Antwerp. Here's another Clarence. His nickname was Clarence Bontangalo. Played guitar, piano, and accordion. He was a mentor to Johnny Winter. Played with Clifton Chenier. He ran a drive-in theater and repaired vinyl siding. Here's a song about a Creole town and him being one happy Frenchman. It's about time we lay. Let the good time roll. She's a really fine. We let the bon ton rule. We let the mule pull. Now don't you be no fool. We let the bon ton rule. To the Zaddy Co and let the bon ton rule it. and let the mule pull it. Now don't you be no fool, you let the bon ton rule song he got his name from. We're bursting at the seams. Brand new merchandise priced for quick clearance. Snap it up. I know when you listen to our shows, they're just about full to bursting. But believe it or not, I'm a big believer in bringing more than I need. So there's always a couple of songs that fall out of the basket. This gives me a chance to play a few of them. And here's one that I wanted to play on our show about work. Here's Rex Griffin, a native of Gazden, Alabama. A big fan of Jimmy Rogers, modeled his yodeling after Jimmy's. He had a number of hits, but they dried up in 1939. His last hit, The Last Letter, was his biggest hit. Folks thought it was a suicide note. He was a big inspiration to Hank Williams. Hank recorded a virtual copy of Rex's lovesick blues. Lefty Purcell was also a used fan. Like Hank Williams, Rex had personal demons. His substance abuse brought his life to a premature end. Not as premature as Hanks, Rex made it all the way to age 46. Here he is, you've got to go to work. I'm up every morning at the break of day, cause I got to raise a little corn and hay, stacking up wood for the winter time. 
Saving up money for that gal of mine You got to go to work if you want to spoon around like me Wake up, son, the rooster's crowing, biscuits done and the coffee's going, the young folks hoping that it looks like rain. Old folks wishing they was young again, you got to go to work if you want to be a man like me. Blue shirt, straw hat, the pair of cotton breeches. Mama cut them out and sit the soldier stitches. Hitching up the wagon as a dance in town. Guess I'm gonna swing all the gals around. You got to go to work if you wanna go to town like me. Moonshine, moonshine, cooking in the holler Get a little drunker every time I swallow The work ain't hard and the law ain't bad About the best job I ever had You got to go to work if you want to be a man like me That was Yodel and Grex Griffin. You've got to go to work. Next up, Clarence Henry, but everybody called him Frogman. Born in Algiers, Louisiana, and got his start at the Joy Lounge. He was a fine piano player, and he sang a number of different ways, as you're going to hear in this song. DJ Papa Stapa gave him the Frogman nickname after hearing him sing like a frog. Well, he turned that voice into solid gold when he recorded this record in 1957. Here's Clarence Frogman Henry, I Ain't Got No Home. That was Clarence Frogman Henry, singing like a girl and singing like a frog. Today, Clarence lives quietly in his hometown of Algiers, a home that he shares with a large number of frog ornaments that fans have given him over the years. <laughs> this is Theme Time Radio Hour. We're clearing out the shelves, making room for new stock. We're buying cheap, stacking them high, and selling it low. Passing the savings along to you, the listener. And recognize that the excitement of buying at a sale is contagious. Don't buy items just because others are. A price reduction is no bargain if the product is not needed. Here's one from my show about happiness. This song had me in a bit of a quandary. I got a couple of versions that I like. If push came to shove, my favorite version would probably be the one by Billie Holiday. Mr. Young takes a great solo on it. Here's Billie Holiday, and when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you.
Billy Holiday, and when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. We're in the midst of our clearance sale here, and it gives us a good opportunity to play a song there wasn't time for in our Noah's Ark shows. We mustn't forget our cow. No, well, who can talk cow? Uh, something like this. There are over 800 breeds of cattle, and believe it or not, I'm not kidding you here. Cows can actually have regional accents. An expert can listen to a cow and tell you where it's from. I guess the ones from Boston have them flat A's. Cows can have regional accents, and I guess they can have parties too. At least that's what it sounds like listening to Bob Wills. He's going to tell us all about the big ball of cow town. Come on in, Bob. Wilson, the Texas Playboys, Big Ball and Countdown, here on Theme Time Radio Hour, where we're cleaning out the shelves and having a little clearance sale. Darwin took us forward to a hilltop, from where we could look back and see the way from which we came. But for this insight and for this knowledge, we must abandon our faith in the pleasant poetry of Genesis. We must not abandon faith! Another famous Clarence was Clarence Darrow. He once said, I am an agnostic, because I'm not afraid to think. I'm not afraid of any god who would send me or any other man or woman to hell. If there is such a being, he would not be a god. He would be a devil. Clarence was a famous lawyer, a master of courtroom drama. His most famous case was in 1925, when he defended John T. Scopes, a biology teacher who was accused of illegally teaching the evolutionary origin of man, rather than the doctrine of divine creation. Darrow asked the jury to return a verdict of guilty so that the case might be appealed to the Tennessee Supreme Court. I'm not sure if Darrow used his most famous courtroom trick there. He was known for running a paper clip through his cigar, so during his opponent's closing argument, an enormous ash would build around the paper clip, while the jurors would sit there, staring at this three or four inch ash, wondering when it was going to fall. They weren't paying any attention to his opposition's arguments. He didn't need these tricks, though. He was a shrewd barrister. In honor of Clarence Darrow, here's Walter Smith and his friends, my evolution girl. Once I met a fair young lady And I learned to love her well He believed there is no savior and she says there is no hell Don't believe in false teaching For the truth to you I've told 
Don't believe in evolution Or the devil will get your soul Cheeks were red, her eyes did sparkle And her hair was chestnut brown She believes in evolution And she lives in New York town And she said we came from monkeys Many, many years gone by But I know Will you change your way of living? Won't you be a better girl? And prepare to meet the Savior in a bright and better world. You must walk that lonesome valley. You must cross that trouble time don't you want to meet your mother over on that other side don't believe in false teaching for the truth to you I told don't believe That was Walter Smith and his friends, My Evolution Girl. Here's another shopping tip. Be sure that all warranty information and care instructions are included with the product. A couple of the songs from my street map show are next. Here's a guy as far away from the prodigal sun as you can imagine. Steve Earle. This one will definitely chase away the blue devils. Burning down 
that copperhead road And while we're talking about the prodigal son, let's talk about the man who argued with Sam Phillips about his eternal soul. Of course, I'm talking about the fair day flash, the killer, Terry Lee Lewis. He sings this song, he pounds the piano. He says he wrote it, and that's good enough for me. Here's Jerry Lee, end of the road. End of the road. This next song is actually a poem written by Patrick Kavanagh. The Dubliners took the melody from a song called The Nodding of the Day and put it to the poem, and that became the version of Raglan Road that we are all familiar with. Raglan Road is a traditional song, but in the hands of someone like Van Morrison, you can see how hard it is to separate the performer from the performance. He's like a great jazz musician bringing a new interpretation to a song you've heard dozens of times. Here's Dan Marson of the Chieftains, Raglan Road. On Raglan Road, on an autumn day, I saw her first and knew that her dark hair would weave a snare. That I might one day rue I saw the danger Yet I walked Along the enchantment 
perfect way And I said let grief be a falling leaf at the dawning of the day Listen. On Grafton Street in November we trip lightly along the ledge of a deep ravine where can be seen the worst of passions pledged the queen of hearts still making tarts and I and I and I and I not making hay but I loved too much by such and such is happiness thrown away All right. was Raglan Road, Van Marsen and the Chieftains. The Chieftains all met in the late 50s, where they played in a folk ensemble. They were very popular at social events. They used traditional instruments like the tin whistle, the pipes, and the sistrum. <laughs> Bury Me Beneath the Willow Tree, played by a gifted guitarist who played with the birds and with the Kentucky Colonels, but most importantly, his name was Clarence, Clarence White.
I was Clarence White. Bury me beneath the willow tree on a big Clarence sale. Clarence Lee from Tennessee loved the commercials he saw on TV. He watched with wide, believing eyes and bought everything they advertised. Cream to make his skin feel better. Spray to make his hair look wetter. Bleach to make his white things whiter. Stylish jeans that fit much tighter. Toothpaste for his cavities, powder for his doggies, fleas, and purple mouthwash for his breath, deodorant to stop his sweat. He bought each cereal they presented, he bought each game that they invented, and then one day he looked and saw a brand new ma, a better pa, new improved in every way. Hurry, order yours today. Here's one from my show about families. Dusty Springfield was born with the name Mary Isabel Catherine Benedette O'Brien, a lovely Jewish name. She got her start with her brother in a band called the Springfields. They had a big hit with a song called Silver Threads and Golden Needles. She left the band, who kept the name Springfield, and added Dusty to it, and became the most popular English soul singer. She had a large number of hits, but most people think that her best record is the one she made down in Memphis. The album is called Dusty in Memphis, and this song, written by John Hurley and Ronnie Wilkins, was a top ten hit in the United States and number nine in England. It could be used to describe Marvin Gaye, Wycliffe John, John Ashcroft, or Martin Luther King Jr., because like all of them, Dusty is singing about the son of a preacher man. Billy Ray was a preacher's son, and when his daddy would visit, he'd come along. When they gather round and started talking, that's when Billy would take me a walk in. Out through the backyard we go walk in. Then he look into my eyes. Lord knows to my surprise, the only one who could ever reach me was the son of a preacher man. The only boy who could ever teach me was the son of a preacher man. You see he was, he was, mm, you see he was. Talking to me, you come and tell me everything is alright. You kiss and tell me everything is alright. Can I get away again tonight? The only one who could ever reach me was the son of a preacher man. The only boy who could ever teach me was the son of a preacher man. Yes, he was. Uh, he was. Uh, Lord, he was. Yes, he was. Springfield and Son of a Preacher Man from the Dusty in Memphis album produced by Jerry Wexler, Arif Martin, and Tom Dowd. This is Theme Time Radio Hour having a little Clarence sale. It's a bargain day. Bargain day. Pete Wright would go for the Black Pete label, one of Don Roby's labels. Don was kind of like the Sid Nathan of Texas. Roby recorded a number of hit records, including Eight Men and Four Women, You're Gonna Make Me Cry, and this one for my show about money. Talking about a man who's so poor, he's got nothing in his pocket, except for a nickel and a nail. Pocket 
girl and a nail. I wanna say one more time. Oh, all, all I have is a nickel and a nail. My friend, no, 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 they just don't know. Pennsylvania and Louisiana both have Clarences. There's a suburb by that name in Lithgow, New South Wales. There's also a river in Australia and a city in Tasmania. There's a small town in New Zealand and a hamlet in Clarence, Rockland, Ontario, Canada. Clarence is all. Here's one for my fruit show. Let's wander over to the succulent fruit department. Somebody's in my orchard. Picking at my plum tree Somebody's in my vineyard Stealing my grapes from me If I catch the cat I'll take my gun and let it tat tat Somebody's sneaking melons Off of my melon vine Whoever grabbed those goodies He ain't no friend of mine If I catch that cat I'll take my gun and let it tat tat Somebody digs my fig trees Someone loves honeydews That someone with that sweet tooth Ain't nothing but bad news If I catch that cat I'll take my gun and let it tat tat Somebody likes persimmons I see him looking back Looking at all my wallets Listen to his lip smack If I catch that cat I'll take my gun and let it tat tat 
Somebody ate green apples He's got a tummy ache Somebody shook my peach tree That is the last he would shake I catch that fat cat I take my gun and let it tat tat I catch that fat cat I take my gun and let it tat tat I catch that fat cat I'll take my gun and let it tat You know I better get out of the peach orchard before I get myself in trouble there were many different kinds of fruit, like tree fruits. Those are your peaches, pears, apricots, apples and cherries, as mentioned in the previous song. You also have succulent fruits, tropical and exotic fruits, and citrus fruits. Your clementines, your leech limes, grapefruits, mandarins, tangerines, kumquats, tangelos, lemons, and oranges. Clarence Gatemouth Brown had two brothers. One was named James Widemouth Brown, and the other was Wilson Getmouth Brown. But the only one we're concerned with today is Clarence. He had a live guitar and a swinging band. On this record, from 1953, on the Peacock record label, where the smart money always was, he's joined by jazz trombone player Al Gray. You hear this solo, and you can't believe that Al played with Duke Ellington's band. It's pure gut bucket. Here's Clarence Gatemouth Brown at Boogie Uproar. <laughs> instrumentals all the way through, but that one was so swinging, we had to play the whole thing. This is your golden opportunity to buy quality merchandise at bona fide clearance prices. Come in now. Take advantage of these clearance savings. We did a classic rock show a while back. We didn't get a chance to play this next record. The Rock of Gibraltar is at the southern tip of Europe. It's near Spain on its northern front, and it rests on the crossroads of the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean. It's a British-dependent territory, 
The stretch of water that separates it from northern Africa is the Strait of Gibraltar. In ancient times, it was one of the pillars of Hercules. More recently, it became famous as the site where John Lennon married Yoko Ono. As it says in the lyrics of the Ballad of John and Yoko, you can get married in Gibraltar near Spain. That wasn't the first song to mention the Rock of Gibraltar. I don't know if this one is either, but I do know it's earlier. It's the big man, Joe Turner, America's favorite singing bartender, singing Rock of Gibraltar. My girl got on like a rock in Gibraltar And she says she will not be removed My gal got on like a rock in Gibraltar And she says she will not be removed Yes, I know better Because I went to a different school Yes, because they call you Little Miss Glamour You think that everybody should be your fool Because they call you Little Miss Flamma I want to tell you I'm nobody's fool I know all the ropes, baby And I travel all the school he made for the Savoy label, Rock of Gibraltar, here in our clearance sale. Coming up next on Theme Time Radio Hour, a couple of songs from my show about famous people. The Lion, a Calypso singer, began singing in 1927 and came to the United States seven years later. He was still around in 1970 when he became president of the Calypsonians Association. He even had a hit in 1995 with a soccer version of his earlier hit, Papa Chunks. But this is from back in the 30s, all about a man who changed the way people sang. Here's Lion with a song called Bing Crosby. Of all the world's famous singers that I have ever seen on the movie screen. Of all the world's famous singers that I have ever seen on the movie screen. Lawrence Debert and Nelson Eddy, Donald Norris and Morton Downey, Kenny Baker. And Rudy Valley, but the crooning prodigy is Bing Crosby. Bing has a way of singing with his very heart and soul, which captivates the world. His millions of listeners never fail to rejoice at his golden voice. They love to hear his blood a dealer. So sweetly and with such harmony, thrilling the world with his melody. Mention might be made of Bing's romantic life centered on his wife. 
As lovely as the soft selves of poetic dreams Her smile is like the moonbeam A former star, we know she can sing But now her voice she has reserved for her sons and Bing So, so happy must be Bing Crosby But he has married a beauty like Dixie Lee I wonder if you heard him singing the song May I be the only one to say I And yet I wonder if you heard again Every time it rains, it rains Pennies from heaven But love thy neighbor was the most thrilling song And get along little doggy get along so sweetly And with such harmony Thrilling the world with his melody Bing has a most interesting personality beloved universally. He has two pet race horses, double trouble, and Ligarotti pipe smoking is his hobby. He has a queer eccentricity. He takes off his hat very infrequently. So one and all, less unanimously, shout three cheers for his golden voice prodigy. It's all there. The pipe smoking, the two pit race horses, the queer center city. Crooning, that's what they called the way Bing sang. He was the first singer to be able to sing softly on records because of new microphone technology. Before that, he had to belt out a song like you were trying to reach the back row. Let me stay in your arms. I'm addicted to your charms. You're getting to be a habit with me. Can't break it. You're getting to be a habit with me. Bing was able to sing more conversationally. He kind of was the singing. Jimmy Stewart was the acting. He got 23 gold and platinum records. That might not sound too astounding, but consider this. He recorded all through the 30s and 40s, and gold records didn't even start until 1958, which was the year he first considered retirement. Quite a man. Quite a singer. Bing Crosby. It's here, Zenith's annual clearance sale. Zenith quality at low prices. Now at participating Zenith dealers. Ben Bond grew up in Philadelphia, played drums and guitar, produced a number of records, including the last album made by soul great Arthur Alexander. He composed the theme song to the TV show Third Rock from the Sun and was the music director for that 70s show. He also wrote a love song that used Jerry Lewis as a metaphor. Here's Ben Bond and Jerry Lewis in France.
was Jerry Lewis in France talking about Phil Spector's bodyguards. They didn't help him a lot, did they? Jerry Lewis was born Joseph Levitz, and in France they call him the Ra de Crazy. Well, the French call him many things, not least of which is genius. The French seem to love Jerry Lewis. Some people think the French look at him as a quintessential ugly American. Me, I like to believe they just appreciate a good buttfall when they see one. Whatever the reason, they gave him the French Legion of Honor in 1984. Magnifique, Jerry. That boogie woogie piano you're hearing is being played by another Clarence, Purple Clarence Lofton, who recorded this song in 1935 on the Volcanion label. He honed his chops as a teenager in medicine shows and played in bars around Memphis and Mississippi, finally moving to Chicago in the early 20s. When he was born, he had a game leg which gave him his nickname. He was not restricted physically, however, and he was a wild piano pounder. He would dance standing up while playing the piano. He was one of the kings of Boogie Woogie, Cripple Clarence Lofton. That lady by the name is Lou, Chuck thinks that she caught the flu. That if I has jumped in bed, she spoke and spoke like this. Shake shoulder, can't shake your feet. Shake nothing, mama, but your weak kidneys knees call. You should not dare to talk. Should dare to talk. I'm dirty little, I don't even spend that thing night and day on oh, being out. She ain't drinking lunch, you're hanging on the wall. Out the window, get your point to fall. Stop while she me if it's all night long. I think about your habits, it's all wrong. You should not do your song. Just do your song. Just do your song. I'm dead in love. I'm just doing this thing night and day. This is Theme Time Radio Hour, trying to make room in the Theme Time Warehouse. Here's a couple of songs from my show about nothing. Jimmy Heap and the Melody Masters, one of those great capital honky-tonk records. Jimmy and his band recorded the original version of The Wild Side of Life, and the song Release Me was originally a national hit for Jimmy. Here they are, with a double negative from 1954, You're Nothing But a Nothing. Never dive in town Dancing and drinking You never turn it down You make love to everyone No matter who it may be
some hearts are sweet and true. I searched the wide world over and finally fell for you. You're just a honky tonker that's looking for a spree. Jimmy Heap and the Melody Masters from Taylor, Texas, over near Austin. Right, Tex? What? And you ain't nothing but a nothing. I've known plenty of people like that. Thomas Jefferson was a smart man. He said, the man who reads nothing at all is better educated than the man who reads nothing but newspapers. Amen, Thomas. If you keep your eyes shut, you can't miss nothing. I don't know if that's where Ike Turner got this song title, but I know it's true. Here's Ike, along with Tina, who's saying a lot by singing about nothing. You can't miss nothing. All of my friends are asking me why I didn't shed a tear when you told me goodbye. I'll never, never, never make a fool of myself, cause if the Somebody else And you can't miss that The brothers miss this You can't miss nothing That you never had My mama once told me When I was a girl She even said one day That I would fall in love To make real sure That I was loved in return the only way that my heart would burn And you can't miss nothing The blood of this You can't miss nothing that you never had Boys can come and go as they choose Was I and Tina Turner from 1963. You can't miss nothing. Or to put it another way, you don't miss your water till the well runs dry. Or to put it even another way, instead of thinking about what you're missing, try thinking about what you have. Earl Wilson put it this way. If you think nobody cares if you're alive, try missing a couple of car payments. Flight 209-er, clear for Vector 324. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our Vector, Victor? Now our radio clearance, over. Then Clarence, over. Over. Another famous Clarence is Clarence Clemens. He's been backing up Bruce Springsteen for as long as I can remember. He went to Maryland State College on a football scholarship. He was a lineman and wanted to play pro ball, but he injured himself, and that was good for the music industry. Clarence just doesn't play music. He's also acted. If you saw him on Different Strokes, Nash Bridges, or in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. According to the Smoking Gun website, Clarence is the only male member of the E Street Band to enjoy a private dressing room. In his dressing room, Clarence requires Carr's Water Biscuits and Beluga Caviar. Additionally, Clarence has a whole roasted chicken delivered to his dressing room promptly at 9.45 during every Springsteen performance. I guess that's when Bruce is doing his songs from Nebraska or Tunnel of Love. We played Jim Ford once before, and it seemed like a good time to revisit it on our big Clarence sale. So here's Jim Ford for my show about days of the week. The candles burn, the sackles turn. 
Another day is healing All the things I missed out on Yesterday The nights come dressed in leather boots Even through the dark the truth can't hide Behind no smile of a leather boots Words around don't sound the same They're out of tune the way we blame I think I'll sing all my songs in harmony Now that we don't even know love from hate We all claim to be so straight We was bent before we came to the thing Just to get to Monday There ain't no other road in this old land we can take Yeah, you gotta go through it if you wanna get to it Cause you ain't gonna find it no other way Often thoughts that sound so loud I heard among some eerie crowds By the eraser In the wind who's a listening Here comes the dawn And I see the morning sun peeping in on me It happens to the best of us Ain't this a crazy world we're living in We got to go through Sunday Just to get to Monday That's the way life's always been Here in our Clarence sale. Here's another Clarence by the name of Carter. He started off in a duo, Clarence and Calvin. He went off on his own and recorded for the Atlantic label. He recorded a song in 1967 called Tell Daddy, which inspired Eddie James' answer record, Tell Mama. He had so many hits. He recorded Patches, Snatching It Back. He did a great version of Dark End of the Street, but I want to play this one. Too Weak to Fight. Here's Clarence Carter. There is something, baby, about you That's really attracting me Yeah And your sweet love, darling Really got a hold on me I've got a little taste of your love And now I'm hooked on you we 
with my head You got me too weak to fight uh -huh. Too weak to fight now, baby I'm calling wrong numbers Too weak to fight now, baby You got my head Clarence Carter, number 13 pop record, number 3 R&B, back in 1968. Too weak to fight. If you're too weak to fight, perhaps you should consult the work of a man named Angelo Ceciliano. He changed his name to Charles Atlas. He was named the world's most beautiful man in 1921, and the world's most perfectly developed man in 1922. The Charles Atlas course with dynamic tension can turn you into a beast of a man. He coined the term dynamic tension for a type of equipment-free bodybuilding. There was a famous comic strip called The Insult that made a man out of Mac. It showed a kid getting sand kicked in his face. He went and took Charles Atlas course and no one ever bothered him again. P.S. He also got the girl in the end. Charles Atlas, not a Clarence. Out they go! Hundreds upon hundreds of quality items at once a year clearance prices. A shower of savings for you. Here's one that I wanted to play on our Around the World show. Mount Fuji is a sacred mountain in Japan, and everyone knows the song Fujiyama Mama by Wanda Jackson. What a lot of people don't know, that it was originally a rhythm and blues song by Anastine Allen, who got a start singing with Lucky Millinder. We don't often play both versions of one song. But these two are so different, and Wanda's rocks so hard, we got to play both of them. Here's Anastine Allen, Fujiyama Mama. I'm a Fujiyama Mama, and I'm just about to blow my top. Fujiyama, yama, 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 yama. I'm a Fujiyama Mama, and I'm just about to blow my top. Fujiyama, yama, 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 yama. Cause when I start erupting, ain't nobody. I'm a Fujiyama mama and I'm just about to blow my top Fujiyama yama 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 And when I start erupting ain't nobody gonna make me stop Fujiyama yama I've been to Nakisaki, Hiroshima too The same I did to them babe I can do to you Cause I'm a Fujiyama mama and I'm just about to blow my top same song. Yeah, and then shoot out the light Cause I'm a Fujiyama mama And I'm just about to blow my top 
Jackson, here on Theme Time Radio Hour, where we're having a little clearance sale. Inconceivable. Some ladies bake a bird's eye pie and say it is their own. Well, it tastes like homemade. Same like short crust pastry and lots of juicy beef. Is this your own? I am not just a pretty face. Bird's eye steak and kidney pie. It can make a dishonest woman of you. Another famous Clarence was Clarence Birdseye, who was the inventor of quick-freezing food products and convenient packages. That's right, he's the father of the TV dinner. Soon, of course, they'll be called Internet Dinners. Clarence was born in 1886 in Brooklyn. He was a taxidermist, but he always wanted to be a chef. He wanted his family to have fresh food all year round. He was traveling in the Arctic. I don't know why. They saw the people there preserve fresh fish and meat in barrels of seawater that was quickly frozen by Arctic temperatures. He put two and two together and invested seven dollars for an electric fan, buckets of brine, and cakes of ice. That seven dollar investment in 1923 was the startup cost for bird's eye frozen food. Six years later, he sold it for twenty-two million dollars. Not a bad return on your investment, Clarence. We played Lloyd Dixon talk about a girl 15 and our show about numbers. Here's the same story from a slightly different camera angle, much like Rashomon. Here's Rallo Kali showing that not all 15-year-old girls are blessing and innocent. 15. Thing. 
peach And how could he have known that she was all, all, all at 15 was 15 by Ryla Kiley. I always love a record with a theremin solo. 15 may have been over the hill for Humbert Humbert. He was the protagonist in the famed Russian novel Lolita. In the book, Humbert becomes obsessed with a 12-year-old girl named Doris, who he nicknames Lolita. The book caused great controversy and was banned. Finally came out in Paris on the Olympia Press. Graham Greene called it one of the best books of the year. The band was lifted, and not only did the book become a great success, but the film adaptation by Stanley Kubrick is considered a classic. But me, I like to curl up with the pages of a good book. Quite often when we're putting together a show, the first records that get cut out are ones by artists we play a lot of. But that means records like this get cut out of our cat show. What else do I have to say about the men in black? Here's Johnny Cash and me and I can't. I give my woman half my money at the general store. I sit now by a little groceries and don't spend no more. Then she paid ten dollars for a ten cent hat and got some store bought cat food for me and I can't. When I give her ten more dollars for a one way ticket, she was mad as she could be. Then I bet ten more that if she ever left, she'd come a crawling back to me. thing on her side of the bed. I found a little old note where her head belonged. It said, Dear John, honey, baby, I'm long gone. When I heard a whistle blowing and the big wheels a turning, I was scared as I could be. I put on my overalls and I headed for town. I'm gonna bring her back with me. I told him all about her pretty eyes and long blonde hair. He spit his tobacco, said, I'll be that blamed. I believe I did see her leaving on a eastbound train. I bought a round trip ticket on a eastbound train. I was broke as I could be. But when I come back, I gotta buy another ticket. Gonna bring her back with me. That was Johnny Cash and me and I can't hear that clearance sale. Another soul guy named Clarence was born in Cochran, Georgia. He wrote the million selling hit Cleanup Woman by Biddy Wright and worked with Gwen McCray and a number of other big hit makers. His name is Clarence Reed. I'm gonna play a record by him now, but what I want you to do is seek out his alter ego. He made records under the name Blowfly. Before there was Cool Keith, Old Dirty Bastard, or the Two Live Crew, there was Blowfly, making X-rated songs with a funky groove. He would take popular songs and write dirty lyrics to them. He was based out of the Criteria Studios down in Florida. A lot of Blowfly records sound like hit soul records, but very dirty. Here he is in his cleaner version, Clarence Reed. Fools are not born. Oh, 
Clarence Blowfly Reed, Fools Are Not Born. Would you consider buying a product if it were not on sale? Pearly constructed products or odd designs are no bargain, even if on sale. Usually sale merchandise can't be returned or exchanged unless it was sold as first quality and turns out to be defective. At closeout sales, be cautious when buying items that may require service or repair. Find out who will be responsible for the service and warranty work. This is Steam Time Radio Hour, where we're cleaning out the shelves and having a little clearance sale. Here's a couple of songs from our sugar show. In the early 20s, Mississippi John Hurt was playing with a fiddle player and square dancers. A talent scout for OK Records was passing through Avalon, Mississippi, where John lived, and signed him up. John was soft-spoken and articulate. He was better suited as a recording artist than to be playing in a raucous jig joint. His records didn't sell large numbers, and he was content to make his living as a hired hand in Avalon. Now the story might have ended there if a guitar player named Tom Hoskins hadn't listened to his 1928 song, Avalon Blues. He tracked Mississippi John Hurt down in Avalon. Now this is 35 years after that record came out. John was in his 70s and he was tired. He had worked all his life doing back back in labor. He didn't think anyone remembered his music. But people did, and fortunately, he was still able to play and sing. He became part of the folk and blues musical revival and reached success that he never could have imagined. And it was well deserved too, as you're gonna hear on this version of Candyman. Here's Mississippi John Hurt. All you ladies gather round the good sweet candy and man's in town, candy man. Candy man. He's got the candy that's nine inch long. You sell it past the hog and chew his cone, candy man. Candy man. The sweet, gentle sounds of Mississippi John Hurt. You can hear elements of the songster tradition, the music that came before the blues, carrying elements of minstrel songs and other Native American forms. This next record was originally performed by cartoons. It was a number one hit in 1969. It knocked Honky Tonk Woman from the number one spot. It was rejected by the Monkees, but then the Archies recorded it. 
We're not going to play the Archies. We got to draw the line somewhere. And Steph is Bob Molly and the Wheelers and Sugar Sugar. Sugar, sugar, by Bob Marley and the Wheelers. Bob Marley's final words to his son Ziggy in 1981 were money can't buy a life in a crypt near his birthplace. Buried along with him were his Gibson Les Paul guitar, a ring he wore every day that was given to him by the Prince Asfa Wolfson of Ethiopia, a marijuana bud, a soccer ball, and a Bible. His needs were simple. Nothing reserved. Our entire stock in all departments, priced for quick clearance. Get your share now. 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 The Jive Bombers grew out of two groups. There were Sonny Austin and the Jive Bombers and the Palmer Brothers. They came together in the early 50s and formed the Jive Bombers. Clarence Palmer, you knew there was going to be a Clarence involved, was from Pawtucket, Rhode Island and had a distinctive vocal style. As you hear in this song, Bad Boy. Here's Clarence Bad Boy Palmer and the Jive Bombers. I'm just a bad boy. In fancy clothes, I ain't taking the trouble. Julie! 
show about night. It was written by Thelonious Monk, and it was given lyrics by Bernie Hannigan and Clarence Williams. The woman singing it was known as Betty Bebop. Well, she hated that name. She thought that Bebop was limited, and she wanted to do more, and she did. She was recommended by Miles Davis to Ray Charles, and if you heard our cold show, you heard that they went on Baby It's Cold Outside. Well, this was about two years later, 1963 to be exact, and it's her version of the Thelonious Monk classic, Crown Midnight. When the day has turned to evening, to evening, and the stars come out to show their magic, that's the time you It's so strange and it's blue at midnight. Are those whose dreams are shattered, are shattered? Some who search in vain for long lost romance. Some who walk the city. Canyons, hoping they'll get one more chance when your life seems it's not worth living and your world seems it's unforgiving.
was Betty Carter, and around midnight, here on Theme Time Radio Hour, everything's got to go. But before we go, a couple of famous Clarences we did not have time to talk about. Clarence Williams III from Mott Squad, the painter Clarence Holbrook Carter, Clarence Saunders, the pioneer of supermarkets who started the Piggly Wiggly chain, and of course Clarence Thomas, longtime member of the Supreme Court. Well, we got time for one more. Here's one from my show about blood. It's the Rolling Stones and the title track from the album of the same name, Let It Bleed.
That was the Rolling Stones. Let it bleed. You know, I never asked Keith this. I mean, I don't know how you'd bring it up, but there's always been that rumor about how he went to Switzerland and had his blood switched. How do you do that? Sounds like it'd be an expensive proposition and time-consuming. But Keith has always been a pioneer. <laughs> We've made this the greatest clearance sale ever. Don't miss it. Well, we're going to get out of here. We'll see you next week. We'll start filling the shelves up again. And when you're out there, just remember to ask yourself, why did this merchandise not sell at the regular price? Was it overpriced or defective? If so, how will this affect the item? Is this item trendy? And will it soon be out of style? Am I buying it too late? Should I be buying it at all? If the answer to any of these questions is no, walk away. Keep your money, fans, and only shop at reputable locations, like here at Theme Time Radio Hour. We'll see you next week. Boy, how is that? Oh, boy, that ought to get it. Thanks for listening to Theme Time Radio Hour with your host, Bob Dylan. Produced by Eddie Gorodetsky and the associate producer is Anita Fitzgerald. Continuity is by Eats Martin and the editor is Damian Rodriguez. The supervising editor is Rob McCulver. The research team is Diane Lapson and Bernie Bernstein with additional research courtesy of Lynn Sharon and April Hayes, Callie Glavin, and Terrence Michael, Sean Patrick, and Matthew Meltzer. Robert Bauer was the librarian and the production coordinator was Debbie Sweeney. Special thanks go out to Randy Azradi, Coco Shinomiya, Simpsons Diner, and Lee Abrams. Tex Carbone was our director of studio operations, recorded in Studio B of the historic Abernathy Building, built in 1848. It's a Great Water Park production in association with Big Red Tree. This is your announcer, Pierre Mancini, speaking. Be sure to be here next week for Goodbye.